Lando Norris wins for the first time in Formula One. Oh, about time. After 110 Grand Prix starts, seven third places, and eight second places, Lando Norris finally won his first Grand Prix. Norris is a driver with a lot of racecraft and has never been outqualified by a teammate. He came close to winning before, but he also had cars that weren't good enough. How did his Formula One career progress until his first race win? Let's dive in. Norris debuted in the 2019 season for McLaren in Australia alongside Carlo Sainz. He was a promising rookie from the McLaren Academy and shined in F3 and F2. Before we go on and talk about his Formula 1 career, let's take a quick look at his Formula 3 and Formula 2 seasons. In 2017, Lando Norris raced in Formula 3 and finished 20 times on the podium in a 30-race season. He drove a remarkable season and clinched the title with two races remaining. This was his fifth title in four years, and it just shows how consistent he can be. He earned a place in the McLaren Driver Academy and was announced as the official test man reserve driver. In that same year, he drove one race in Formula 2 before competing full-time for the 2018 season. In Formula 2, he competed against his friends, George Russell and Alex Albon. Norris had a great start with a win in Bahrain. Unfortunately, this was the only win he would achieve that season. He showed once again great consistency, which ultimately earned him second place in Formula 2 and a Formula 1 racing seat for the 2019 season. He was announced quite early, which showed the trust McLaren had in him. Now, on to his first Formula 1 season. Norris qualified 8th and finished 12th in his first Grand Prix in Australia. He didn't have to wait very long for his first points finish because at the second Grand Prix in Bahrain, he achieved it with a 6th place. It was a season with ups and downs. Norris had several collisions, for example, in China and Spain, but the car wasn't reliable either. McLaren had an engine deal with Renault, and we all know how the reliability of Renault is. Not good. In Belgium, Norris drove a fantastic race and made his way up from 11th to 5th before his engine failed in the final lap. Luckily, we as fans got incredible onboard radio from it. I can't, it's broken! It's broken! In his debut season, Norris scored 49 points with two sixth place finishes that season. He achieved points finishes in 10 races, and with a bit more luck and reliability, he'd be closer to his teammate. Norris finished 11th in the driver standings, and his teammate, Carlo Sainz, finished 6th. Norris outqualified Sainz in 11 of the 21 races as just a rookie. In 2020, Norris got his first podium. It was a weird season because of the pandemic. The season started in Austria. Norris qualified 4th, but was promoted to 3rd due to a grid penalty for Lewis Hamilton. It was the highest starting position for McLaren since 2016 at the same Grand Prix. Norris had luck on his side in this race because of a penalty for Hamilton. Norris drove a fantastic last two laps that were coached by his engineer. This gave him his first podium and made him the third youngest podium finisher in Formula 1 history. He had six consecutive points finishes before finishing 15th in Russia and after collecting damage in the opening lap. In France, he had reliability issues again as his engine failed while he was in sixth position. A wet weather race in Turkey could have been in Norris's favor, but a mistake in the qualifying gave him a penalty. He still had a great Grand Prix and finished eighth. He ended the season with two strong races, and overall, he was more consistent and didn't have that many reliability issues. Norris finished the season as ninth in the Drivers' Championship, just eight points behind his teammate Sainz, whom he outqualified again. In 2021, Norris got a new teammate, Daniel Ricciardo. It was a season with multiple podiums, almost a race win, but also a season with multiple mistakes. He started with a fourth place in Bahrain, and in Imola, he would have qualified third. Norris did exceed the track limits and got demoted to seventh. He still had a good race and claimed that third position. Everyone wants to achieve a win or a podium at the Monaco Grand Prix, and with a bit of luck, Norris did exactly that. Charles Leclerc didn't start, and Valtteri Bottas retired. The result? A third-place finish in Monaco, 
After that, he had three consecutive fifth place finishes. In Austria, he got another penalty after pushing Sergio Perez off the track, but still finishing third. In Italy, McLaren had their first 1 2 finish in 11 years. Lando Norris finished second behind his teammate, Daniel Ricciardo, who won that race. Norris wanted to pass Ricciardo, but the team didn't let him, and I don't think he had the speed to do so. In Russia, Norris claimed his first pole position and should have won that race. It started raining, and he stayed out on dry tires because there were not many laps left. Norris went off the track and changed tires too late. He finished seventh instead of claiming his first victory. In the remaining seven races of the season, he kept on scoring points, which shows his consistency again. Lando Norris finished that season as sixth in the championship with 160 points. His teammate had 115 points and finished as eighth that season. He not only outqualified his teammate, but he also beat him for the first time in his Formula One career. At the start of the 2022 season, Norris extended his contract with McLaren until at least 2025. This was also the year Norris got the worst car of his career. The team misjudged the new regulations, and it was again a season with ups and downs. In Bahrain, he started with a terrible qualification and a 15th position in the race. In the following two Grand Prix, it looked a bit better, and he scored points with a 7th and 6th position in these races. Once again, Amola was a weekend full of rain, and Norris showed his strength and racecraft. In qualification, there were a lot of red flags, and Norris himself even spun. He still qualified third and ended the race also in that position. The season went on with multiple ups and downs. He crashed in Miami after Pierre Gasly touched his car, followed by an impressive drive in Monaco, considering he was suffering from tonsillitis. In Belgium, he had a penalty due to changing engine components and didn't achieve any points. In Singapore, McLaren had a good weekend. Norris finished fourth in front of his teammate Ricardo. He scored points in the Brazil sprint race, but didn't finish the main race after a gearbox failure. He ended the season with a sixth place in Abu Dhabi. In 2022, he totally outperformed Ricardo with 122 points to Ricardo's 37. Norris became seventh in the Drivers' Championship, and guess what? He once again outqualified his teammate. In 2023, Norris got a rookie as a new teammate, Oscar Piastri. The team still hadn't really improved the car, and they really needed to wait until the Grand Prix of Austria. Both drivers retired in Bahrain after reliability issues. In Saudi Arabia, Norris was for the first time since his debut season eliminated in Q1. He finished 17th in that race. In Australia, he scored his first points. He went from 13th to finish 6th with a strong drive. He had another bad qualifying in Miami, and in the race, he made contact with Nick de Vries. There was rain in Spain, and we know by now that these conditions favor Norris. He qualified third, but after contact with Lewis Hamilton in the race, he didn't score points. He got a penalty in Canada for unsportsmanlike behavior after driving really slow while entering the pit lane because the team did a double pit stop. The season didn't look that good, but they needed to hold on and just wait for Austria. At this Grand Prix, McLaren brought updates that pretty much redesigned the whole car, and Norris immediately showed the team what he's capable of. A first top four finish was the result of the hard work they put in. At the British Grand Prix, Norris qualified second, with Piastri in third place. He finished that race in second place. This made Norris the first McLaren driver to do that since the 2010 British Grand Prix. In Hungary, he became second after defending against Sergio Perez. That podium would be remembered for Norris breaking Verstappen's first place trophy. He went on with a seventh place in the Dutch Grand Prix after the team didn't change his tires during changing conditions. Four consecutive podiums followed, and a very strong drive in Singapore was the start of this. He defended against both Mercedes cars on fresh tires. In Mexico, he went from 17th to 5th place in the race. These races showed once again what Norris is capable of if he gets a good car. He proved that again in Brazil, with a sprint pole position and a 2nd place in the main race after overtaking 4 cars at the start. He had a big crash in Las Vegas, but after checks in the hospital, he was okay. Norris finished the season with 205 points in total to Piastri's 67. He placed sixth in the Drivers' Championship, matching his 2021 result. This was just one point behind fourth place as Fernando Alonso and Charles Leclerc tied on 206 points. Before the 2024 season started, 
Norris signed a new multi-year contract with McLaren. This shows his faith in the team. With a strong ending to the 2023 season, people expected them to compete with Red Bull Racing. This wasn't the case, and they started the season a bit on the back foot with a sixth place in Bahrain. He finished eighth in Saudi Arabia, while Piastri finished fourth in Australia. The first podium of the season was there. Norris started and finished third in Japan. They were beaten by Red Bull and Ferrari, resulting in a fifth place. At the first Chinese Grand Prix since 2019, he claimed the first sprint pole position of the season. The race officials reinstated his lap after they initially deleted it for exceeding the track limits. Norris made a mistake in the opening lap. He was too eager and finished sixth. You can say that he tried to overdrive the car because he felt that a win was possible. He qualified fourth for the main race, but finished second after a very strong drive. Not only that, but he also matched the pace of the Red Bull of Sergio Perez, which is impressive. The Miami Grand Prix arrived, a race the whole McLaren team looked forward to. They brought almost a B-spec car with nine upgrades. If we compare this to the 2023 season, you know what I mean. In that season, they brought nine upgrades in a whole year. It was again a sprint weekend, and Norris qualified in ninth place. He didn't have any chance of showing what the upgrades were capable of because he was retired after a turn one collision. Norris qualified in fifth place for the main race, but went on to win it. The McLaren car was really quick on every tire compound, and even with older tires, he was quicker than the people in front of him. He got lucky with the safety car timing, and this gave him a free pit stop. Nevertheless, Norris showed his race pace and went on to pull a seven-second gap to Max Verstappen in second place. Finally, with a bit of luck and an improved car, he won a Grand Prix. It took him 110 race starts. This is the first one of many, if you ask me. What do you think? Can Lando Norris and McLaren win more races this season? Are they even going to challenge Red Bull Racing for the championship? Please let me know in the comments. If you want to know where all the drivers for the 2025 season end up, watch this video right now. Don't forget to like and subscribe.